Hello, Libra viewers. I'm going to look into what your person is thinking, feeling, wanting, just see what the situation is. The last reading I did, it was mostly just focused on you. It was just saying, you know, you're healing childhood wounds, um, really working on fixing your subconscious patterns. You know, it's like you're wanting new love, but you're, um, you have patterns that you have to break so you can actually attract and be attracted to the right kind of people. So the last reading I did, did was more about just you and your own, you know, mental processes that you're going through. But let's see what the cards have to say this time around. Libra viewers. Got the Six of Swords. Yeah, starting a new life. Six of Swords, Ten of Pentacles. Could be some financial abundance or starting a new career or a new job or something that's some, maybe a promotion, something that's going to lead to financial abundance. Devil energy. Seven of Cups. Yeah, let's see. Tower reversed. So that's that's... It's a pretty good reading so far. You've got pretty good energy. It looks like you got some life changes that have either just come in or are currently coming in. Ace of Pentacles. The Eight of Cups. Nine of Swords. The Six of Wands. Oh. Six of Cups. So it sounds like kind of like missing someone or some type of nostalgic energy is what I'm feeling here. Can you see that? There we go. I think some of you that have been watching, like some of you that are wa that watched my last video, I think maybe you're kind of taking my advice about really working on yourselves and, and healing those subconscious patterns. Because like I said, it's like you're praying for love. You're wanting love to come in, but you still have this, this attraction to narcissists or abusive people or emotionally unavailable people. And it's like subconscious. It's probably something repeated from childhood. You probably, if you look back, if you can really be introspective and really think back and be honest with yourself, you know, those of you that are resonating with this reading, those of you that are drawn to this, it's like you probably have a pattern of going for the same type of person again and again. And then you start thinking like all, all men are evil or all women are evil or just they're all love is just not for me. It's just all wrong. But it's like if you're honest with yourself, it's it's the kind of people that you're physically attracted to. It's It's body language. You know, it's like you leave one relationship and then you just... You, you go into a new relationship and it's like the same person just in a different body. You know, it's the same patterns, the same narcissism, the same emotional unavailability, same toxicity. Now, I talked more about that in that last video that I did for you guys. So if this is resonating, you might want to check that video out too. But, um, you know, I don't want to repeat myself too much from the last video because I want people to, you know, I'm going to tell a new story here for those of you that are following me. But... I feel almost like some of you are like questioning it, like the loneliness is kind of taking over. It's like you're wanting this new life, but then there's some, you still have some, just some blocks that you're working through, just subconscious, maybe actually like you might need some like chakra clearing, some, some soul retrieval, some, just some general like healing and cleansing and uncrossing work done. Um, and you can, you can do the uncrossing bath or uncrossing ritual yourself too, but I just sense like a little bit of doubt and maybe even fear of the unknown and and some loneliness here because it's like you know that you want this new life but there's this part of you like subconsciously or like your 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 patterns your your beliefs some things something that someone ingrained inside your head that that feels like you don't deserve it or feel feels like it's too good to be true or you feel like you can't have the life and abundance that you want but it's it's like it's saying you know your guides are trying to reassure you that you can have this abundance. You can have the love and the, the finances and the, and the success and career that you want. You know, sometimes it's really hard work if you come from a, a bad background. If you come from, I mean, if you have like a negative traumatic upbringing, it can be really hard to break those patterns. But, you know, your, your guides are telling you that you can have more. It's just a matter of, you know, can you can you believe on a very deep soul level that you can have more, that you deserve more? So it's like I just see like some pain and some nostalgia and some doubt mixed in with motivation here. So it's like you're going forward to this new life, you know, towards this ten of pentacles. And it's like you are going towards this, this, 
this abundant success, you know, like I said, you might have like a career offer or a, a new job or some, some kind of something new that's going to bring in financial abundance to you. Just this new energy coming in, like 10 of pentacles. It's like, that's like the, you know, completion, like complete, like abundance, money, just success, fame, everything, you know, and you have that energy coming in and it's almost like, it's like you still have to break through the devil energy though. The, the subconscious patterns, the, the addictions, the, the repetitive energy, the toxic energy, the, the doubts and the fears, that little voice inside your head, that, that negativity that says that you can't do this, you know? It's like you kind of get lost in your head sometimes and, and question all of it and, and kind of, you know, don't know where to turn, don't know where to go next. Um... So I'm looking at the seven of cups here. It's like, it's like decisions to be made. It's like being at, I mean, I kind of see it like when I'm looking at this energy now in this context, it's like, it almost seems like he or she is like kind of lost, kind of confused. Like it, it's like, cause I think it's like your soul and your mind are at war, you know, in a sense it's, it's like, it's, it can be a chaotic process when you're rewriting these subconscious patterns, when you're doing this work, it can be, it can be chaotic. Cause it's like, your soul knows what it wants. Your soul knows who its soulmate or twin flame is. Your soul knows what kind of love it wants. Your soul knows what kind of success and abundance and happiness and just financial abundance that you want. But then your mind comes in and it's like, your you know that's what you've learned this lifetime. Your childhood patterns. Your your um just what you've experienced. What you've the traumas. What you've seen this lifetime. And it's like your soul and your mind are kind of at odds with each other right now because it's like your soul knows your soul is trying to push you forward your higher self is trying to scream through and just push you forward into the life that you deserve and the life that you want and then your mind is almost trying to sabotage it because it's not familiar and your mind is saying like you don't deserve it or or you know it's going to be too hard or this this isn't the life for you like you're gonna you're gonna repeat your same like mistakes from the past or it's going to be the way it's always been and, and so it's like your soul is trying to rise above that and show you that, that that's just your mind. That's just, that's just the patterns repeating. That's not who you are. You know what I mean? Like your soul is who you are, who you've been in all your past lives. Your mind, I'm not saying your mind is nothing, but I mean, you have to realize sometimes that those thoughts are just fear-based. Sometimes those thoughts are just based off the abuse that other people have put us through or, you know, what we've gone through in childhood. And so you have to kind of recognize where those thoughts are coming from that it's it's you know like is your insecurity are your insecurities based on what other people did or didn't do and, and you know what I mean it's like it's it's that's them that's that's them it's not you you know what I mean like those insecurities aren't based on things that you've done it's based on what other people did or didn't do so it's kind of asking it to rise above that to start really healing that even if it's it's hard it's it's you know healing is messy healing isn't all healing is not positive thinking and love and light and blah 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 like healing is is crying and anger and chaos sometimes it's healing is a messy process it really is you know true healing because you have so many things that are suppressed that are coming up to be seen and recognized and embraced and understood and then released you know you can't just suppress it and think positive because then it's still going to be there in the end. You know what I mean? Like you have to be honest with yourself. You have to bring that darkness to light. You, 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 you can't be all love and light and positive thinking. You know, there's going to be darkness too. There's going to be pain and anger and chaotic energy too. You know, there's a balance yin and yang. Um, it's like, you can't have the good without the bad too. And, you know, like I said, healing is just messy and chaotic and, and painful sometimes. Sometimes it's incredibly lonely and painful and confusing. But I think your guides are trying to just reassure you that, you know, this new life is attainable. Even if it's a chaotic path ahead, it's like this new life that you want. You can have this new love. You can have this new career. You can have this abundance. You can have more than what you're used to if, if you can, you know, rewrite these subconscious patterns. If, if you can develop a new belief system, if you can, you know make these subconscious patterns conscious and, and work through this, maybe even get counseling for some of you that have been stuck in this energy, you know, uh, because with the devil card, it's like, it's like patterns and addiction and like, almost like doubting yourself, like, can I really have this? Or am I going to fall back into this devil energy? 
you know, kind of like just, just overthinking it. And I think your guides with the tower reversed here, I think your guides are saying like that tower was going to come in no matter what. And if you had continued going down that path, going for narcissistic, narcissistic people, not doing the healing work, not doing your shadow work, you know, suppressing your emotions, letting your insecurities get the best of you, um, ignoring your soul, pushing your soul away and just listening to your mind, then you would have had a tower moment. You would have had an explosion and you would have been forced onto this healing path. But instead, it's like you're not having this tower moment because you're taking responsibility for your life and you're saying, you know what, I'm, I don't need a tower moment. Like, I, like you're listening to your soul. Your soul has been screaming at you to pay attention, to start healing this, to start cutting and clearing people that are toxic, to get down, to, to get on another path, you know, a better path than what you're used to. You know, your soul has been pushing you to do that shadow work and, and change your life and take responsibility for your life. And and with the tower reversed, it's it's kind of like you were you were before in the past, I think that you were in store for another tower moment. You were in store for another heartbreak from a narcissist or another, you know, toxic traumatic event or um some kind of just some kind of explosive negative energy. And instead it's like you're not having to go through that tower moment because you're taking responsibility and you're saying, okay, like you're listening to your soul now. You're not suppressing your soul. You're not ignoring it. You're not listening to your mind and your insecurities. You're you're finally like getting to the root of these issues and you're saying, you know what, this insecurity comes from this moment in childhood or this person in childhood. And I know that it's not actually about who I am on a soul level. It's just what I went through. And it has more to do with that other person that did that to me and abused me than it has to do with me. It's not my fault. It's like releasing that, healing that. You know, like I said, your soul has just been screaming at you. And, and the reason, yeah, it's like the reason you don't have to go through another tower moment is because you're listening, you're finally listening to your soul and you're taking responsibility and you're saying, okay, you know what? I don't need another explosion to force me to get down another path on a better path. You know, like you don't need another split, like heartbreak. You don't need to hit another rock bottom to, to force you to, to start changing your life. You're, you're taking responsibility and you're saying, you know what, I'm going to change my life on my own. I'm going to start doing this work on my own because I want more for myself. I want, you know, more for my family. I want more out of life, you know, from love, from finances, from all areas of your life. Like you're just, you know, changing these beliefs so that you know that you want and deserve more and so that you can be in that vibration of receiving you know, this abundance and, and money and love and all the things that you want and knowing that you deserve it so that when it comes in, you're not sabotaging it and doubting it and questioning it. And I mean, if you were, I hate to say it, but if you fell back into that devil energy where you like the toxic patterns, the, the insecurities, you probably would have another tower moment coming because your guides are, have been pushing you hard. Your soul has been pushing you hard to get on a different path so that you can change your life and have the kind of life that you that your soul wants you to have deep down. And and so it's like it, the tower moment is reversed here because you're you're getting out of this devil energy. And your soul is rising up. You're listening to your soul finally and you're taking responsibility. So it's like that's why you're not having a tower moment cuz your 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 guides don't have to push you into that energy to change your life. It's like you're just you're doing it on your own. You're like I want more, so I'm going to do this. You know, Ace of Pentacles is just you have these new starts when it comes to finances and and love and everything, you know. This is Eight of Cups too is about starting a new life. Um Nine of Swords, it's like yeah, there's still that kind of just that painful energy, but I think you're getting through it, you know? And I think you might be destined to do something in the public eye, like maybe maybe you're going to take what you went through, like the abuse you went through, and maybe you're going to um, be a psychologist or like, you know, some kind of like therapist, or you're going to be like a public speaker, or you're going to be um, working with like children or animals. Like I feel like, you're, like your empathy or something is going to be part of your career in the long run. You know, like you're going to be, you're just going to be in the public eye. Like you're going to use all this energy that you've gone through your whole life, all this, this life experience, and you're going to teach others with it. You're going to be a healer in the community is kind of what I feel for quite a few of you. You know, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. But, you know, Six of Cups, we got nostalgia here. And it's, it's, I mean, I think there might be nostalgia and pain for a person, but I think... The thing is, you have to remember that it's your perspective. Like when you're, if you're in an abusive, toxic situation, it's like, 
when you get out, you feel a sense of freedom. Like you really do. Even if it hurts for a while, you eventually feel that freedom. And you get to a point, like when you start developing genuine confidence, and I'm not talking about like just suppressing. I think in the past, some of you probably like suppressed your negative emotions and just kind of tried to fake it till you make it. No, I'm talking about like genuine confidence. Like you really go inward. You do the shadow work. You really think about things. You know, you really do the healing work. <laughs> so that you like have this genuine love for yourself. Like you develop this genuine confidence. It's not like, it's not about, you know, makeup or the way you dress or, or pretending like you're all that. It's not, that's not confidence. You know what I mean? Like genuine confidence is just knowing who you are on a soul level and just loving yourself. And it's got nothing to do with appearances. Um, I mean, it can be part of it. I'm not saying it can't be, you know, but I'm just saying that, that I'm, I'm not talking about just, putting on a show and pretending I'm talking about really doing the deep messy healing work so that you can develop this 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 ground this this framework for you know genuine self-love genuine confidence where you just know who you are on a soul level and that that's more important to you than anything and anyone else you know that's what you put first is is who you are what what how you resonate um but I think there's almost like a nostalgia for the familiar at first when you go through this because sometimes it's just, it's like, it's scary. It's scary stepping into the unfamiliar. And I think your guides are just saying like, you know, continue stepping into the unfamiliar, continue doing the shadow work. Even if you can't, even if it's hard right now, you know, you're going to go through the ups and downs. That's part of it, part of healing, but just, just go through it. You know, there are going to be times when you want to cling back to the familiar and it's like just saying, don't, you know, keep changing your perspective, keep going through this energy shift so that you can have the life and the love that you want. You know, the thing is with like toxic, like narcissistic relationships too, when you start developing this genuine confidence, you're going to look at those people from your past and you're not even going to be attracted to them. I mean, that's how powerful the mind is. You'll get to a point where like they will not even physically look attractive to you. Like they'll actually look like physically, they'll actually at a certain point, maybe even years down the road, like you'll look at them and it's like you'll they'll notice negative things about them. Like you won't resonate with their energy. You won't be physically attracted to them. They won't your body will feel tense around them. They won't you they won't they won't resonate with you anymore. Like you won't want them. That perspective will shift so that you're wanting healthier, better people, you know, and, and you have to know that, 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 that it's like, it feels like you want that now, but it's like, if you go through this energy shift, if you do the healing work, no matter how long it takes, you can get to that point where you're not even attracted to people like that anymore. And you actually genuinely resonate with people that are good for you, good for you on a soul level, you know, experiencing soul recognition with people, with your soulmates, like, you know, going for people that are not your usual type, um, having those like past life connections with people, like just people that resonate with you. It's like, you can have that. It's just keep, keep stepping out of your comfort zone. Keep pushing into the unfamiliar. You know, it will be a roller coaster. It will be, there will be ups and downs. You know, you will be nostalgic for the past at times. It will be like pushing that baby bird out of the nest. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's terrifying until you realize you can fly and then it's like you have this whole new higher perspective and you're glad you're out of that nest. You know what I mean? So, so keep pushing out of your comfort zone. Keep your guides are saying, you know, keep doing this work that they are, it, it is going to go somewhere. You know, this, this healing work, the shadow work that you're trying to do, the, the, you know, you know, affirmations are changing your patterns. Like really, it's not just affirmations too. It's really, you've really got to dig deep to, to change those subconscious patterns too. But it's like, it's saying, you know, your guys are saying like, I know it's, I, they know it's lonely. They know it's scary. They know it's unfamiliar, but you know, you're, you're being encouraged to realize that yes, you can have this life. If you're committed to it, you can have this new life, this new love, this new abundance. If you're really committed to um to being brave and and doing the shadow work and and pushing forward so thank you guys for watching if this resonates please go ahead and subscribe and um, i do paid private readings as well my email is below and donations are also appreciated even just a dollar it really adds up so quickly my paypal link is right below thank you guys for watching